Hello Rushifters. In this video, we're going to have a look at rendering huge images for print, for instance. Images that you cannot actually render from the UI because it might crash. You might not have enough memory in your machine. You might not have enough video memory on your cards. Or simply, this can be too slow or too hard to render for the machine. Okay, so let's see how we can make this work. And for this, I kind of uh, borrowed the idea from one of our uh, users that's trying to render um, the image of an early universe seen through a telescope. So I said, hey, well, let's try that. Um, and I'm using a sphere. I'm actually distributing points inside of this sphere. There are 100,000 points, and I'm instancing a plane onto these points through the Redshift object tag. I have a, a matrix object of the Redshift tag here. It's in custom object plane and a random effector that moves things around uh, and uh, rotates and scale them a bit. It also gives them a bit of a color if you want. So if I look at this, it's, it looks kind of like this. Every single instance here, actually a point, is will become a plane with transparency. Now the shader is pretty simple. Um, I'm using the multi-shader to load the some images I found in the, on the internet, and these are quite big, right? Uh, they're like 4K or 2K or something like this. I didn't bother to make any alpha, so I'm extracting actually the red channel for no reason, absolutely. So we can get for red or blue or whatever. Okay, I'm using the integer user data from the MoGraph um, object. Actually, the MoGraph ID, because this is actually a MoGraph object. Uh, and it creates ID for each point. So I'm actually looping through them using this divisor and the Redshift modulo. And this the hap same happens here. I don't necessarily need this one. I have the loop here, that, and the loop uses the number of uh, objects in here. And I have 17 textures. OK, so if we're looking at the actual shader and try to render that, Let's look at this. We're getting this, right? You see here, no transparency, right? And that's not correct. We need some sort of transparency. That's why I'm, I'm trying to use the uh, red or I don't know, is green better or blue? I have no idea. To be honest, let's even go with blue, OK? And then I'm compressing this a bit to make it a bit more opaque and using it as alpha into the incandescent shader, right? The incandescent shader can have something like this. But because all these are flat, I wanted to give a bit of depth to the, to the scene. So I'm using the redshift state in camera space and I can extract either the ray length or the vector uh, or the array position Z. Uh, the difference between these two is that this one is the distance from the camera plane to the shading point, while this is uh, from the camera point to the uh, shaded point, right? And the, this is uh, a flat projection, if you want, this is kind of a spherical projection. I don't think for the scene makes too much of a difference. So if we're looking at, at this, you can see that I can use the ramp to bring more um, planes into, um, into uh, let's say, luminosity or less, OK? Just to, to fake the idea of a depth, because galaxies are billions of years apart, and uh, maybe light doesn't travel um, or is not as intense. I don't know. What do I know about astronomy? But it's a fake, so let's make it work. OK, so uh, we have all this. But if I'm adding the depth, it changes a bit. You can see that, right? So I want to render all this, right? But I want to render not at 2K as it's here, but at 10K. OK, so uh, we're going to export this scene as a proxy, because let's assume for a second we can't render it. It's too slow. It's various reasons, OK? so. Um, we can save the scene just to, to keep it and then export Reshift proxy. We're going to call this galaxy.rs. That's fine. And then I'm going to open uh, a command line. 
Okay, and the command line is it's like this, right shift, command line. And if you run this, you get back a little help that says, hey, this is the syntax. This is syntax is reshift command line, the scene, uh, the scene file, basically the proxy name. So it would be reshift command line uh, galaxy.rs and then some options. The options that are interested in are the following. The ORS, output resolution. So it will be like this, uh, galaxy dot rs now i'm using galaxy dot rs because i'm located with my command prompt in the same folder if this was outside i should have used the whole path the same thing for the reshift command line but reshift command line it's in my path i've set it so okay so if i try to render this minus rs and i have to specify a new resolution this is set at uh, 2k by 2k let's say 496 by 496 okay and that will mean i'm trying to render at 4k instead of 2k i can override that okay and uh, let's say what else i want to do well i want to crop this so instead of uh, rendering a full 4k i want to render just a 1k image and i want to start with the top left corner that would be zero zero that's the location of my tile and the width and height of my tile will be 1024 by 1024 okay and i'm gonna press enter and wait for this to render it which it should be decently fast uh, you can see here resolution 496 by 496 and then we get the block size 512 and unified min and max. This is using automatic sampling. Okay, so for speed reasons, in this case, just for this example, I'm gonna change this. I can change about 215 things uh, through the command line. And to show you this, I'm gonna do the following minus list render options. Uh, yeah, list render. Oh, without the proxy name. There you go. 215. And by using any of these one, you can override the render settings. But to do that, you need to pass um, this minus O R O override render options. Okay. So I've decided to create an oro.txt. You can name it whatever you want. It doesn't matter as long as it's passed through here. Okay. And in this case for this, the oro.txt looks like this. I'm disabling automatic sampling and I'm setting unified min and max to one and four. It's 60. Let's do 16 and 64 and adaptive threshold at 0.1 instead of whatever the default is here. Um, oh, let's put it 0 0.01. Okay, save that and export the proxy again. Although it's not necessary because I can override, but just in case, you know, let's say I forget. Okay, and um, Point one, and if I look at this, I put it at point zero 0.01. Okay, that's fine. That should do the trick. Okay, what else can I do? Oh, let's do it like this. And we're gonna get a um, Galaxy DXR. The problem is that I've rendered already a Galaxy DXR, right? And if I render again, well, it will override the existing uh, file. So you can see here, that if I'm opening this, and while this is opening, there you go. Uh, let's look at the information. It's 496 by 496. Okay, that's perfect. Okay, and uh, if we're looking at the new render settings, it says 496 by 496, block size 512, unified uh, min max 16 by 64, as I've set it here. Now I can set the block size 
to be instead of 512, I can set it to 256. But you know what? Uh, I'm okay with 512 for this specific render, right? If you don't have enough memory that you use a lower uh, block size, you can go uh, um, down to 64 even. It will be slower, but it will render, okay? So uh, what about the fact that I'm overriding con continuously my renders? Well, for this, I'm gonna use the OIP, Output Image Path, and I'm gonna create a folder for each tile. So let's say this is the folder one and one because um, I, it starts the first tile um, horizontally and vertically, right? So this will be horizontal and this will be vertical. Okay, and that means now that I'm rendering, I'm gonna end up not with this Galaxy XR, but with the one underscore one folder and in, inside it will be my Galaxy XR, okay? I want to go for the next one, okay, uh, two. And that means I'm gonna put here 124. Okay, and this will create a two one, meaning uh, a second tile on the first row. There you go. Let's go for the third one. And this will be not 124, it will be 2048. But the thing is, I don't want to do this manually. Really, I mean, it's okay maybe to do 10, 16, but what if we have to do, I don't know, 64? We're gonna spend time after each render relaunching with a new option? No, we have to script that. So we have one, two, three, right? And if I open Nuke, for instance, uh, you can do whatever. I mean, I'm using Nuke because it's fast. Um, you can use Natron, which is free. It's kind of a new clone. It's way slower, but you know what? It's free. So um, if I look at this, there you go. The first three tiles. One, two, three. This is a tile, right? This is the, the third tile. This is the first tile, and this is the second tile. We're merging them together, and we're getting the final image. And this is just great. Okay? Uh, thing is, this one, for instance, it's a bit blurry. Mm. I can... I can render this as a different res, right? And have it better. Uh, of course, I have to figure out how many tiles and so on and so forth. Uh, it's a bit cumbersome. So let's do that through scripting. Okay, so uh, let's open the extensions, script manager, and um, let's open a script. I have made a small script here, a shift command line render. It kind of does what you're expecting it to do, Right, so you have the minus oro.txt, which we already know, proxy name. Uh, it's with be galaxy.rs. So it looks for the core data. It can, uh, if you can't find this, it it's goes for C program data redshift, which is the default. And then it does the exact same thing. And uh, if I execute it here, you don't see anything. And you can see here, I'm trying to render um, 1024 by 1024 in in four tiles, two horizontal, two vertical. Okay, but let's say we want to render 10K. Okay, and this will be four and four. Right now you don't see anything if I execute it, you need to open the console. Okay, so open the console, put it here someplace, execute, and this is what the little script output. So we can take this, right? And you can see it increments each tile. Okay, it gives it a name, a folder and so on and so forth. Then we have to put this into a, uh, a text file, right? Actually a bat file. So uh, let's get rid of this. Okay, and new text document, um, render, me dot bat. Okay, and yes, I want to change it. Uh, edit, basically paste it in here. Whoops, and close it, save it. Then let's render that instead of doing the command like like uh, command line like a monkey. So, um, ta-da! 
you can leave this overnight. Okay, you've done your test renders to see that each tile does the right thing. And now you know through scripting, it will render the, the, uh, the exact tile that you need. Since you can see here, it's 25, right? Uh, and that means I'm rendering uh, 10K in five, um, four by four tiles. So each tile will be a 5K, not a 4K tile. Okay, and if I try to open this, uh, at some point it will open. It's still a 10K file. So what's happening, just to show you, you can see it here, here right? Uh, so what's happening is that this huge image is 10K, but from this huge image, it's only using a small tile that you're rendering. It's a, it's a region, you're render regioning it, right? So um, at this point, I can get rid of these and try to see where are we? We're still at the first tile. Okay, fair enough. And believe me, you can render like this really, really huge images. I did not test to see how big this can be, but yeah, believe me, it can be big. Okay, now one thing, a, a word of advice. Don't do what I did, do create a camera. Okay, and render from that camera. In this case, it's using the default camera, but it will be a good thing to, uh, to have a, a camera created for this. Okay, you cannot change the camera from the proxy. You can change it about, to, as you've seen, 215 options from the render options. You cannot change the name, thus the trick with rendering each one in a different folder. Oh, we're at already at 4.1, right? So basically we've rendered four tiles out of, of these. Um, I warn you, if you're doing print rest, things like this, uh, and trying to do this in Photoshop, it might take a while. Okay, one, two, three, four. Okay, these are my four tiles. So I have the first uh, row. There you go. And this is a 5K render. Now, to be honest, this is a bit of a drag in here because I'm not so sure if I did anything wrong or uh, this is getting into a limit. I didn't pay too much attention to anything, any of these. Um, but if there are any issues whatsoever, right? You're gonna notice I did the following. I turn on off the global innovation. We don't need it for this. This is incandescent, it doesn't get anything. And also for the reflection, refraction, and combine, I'm at zero because this guy doesn't do ray bending, it only does transparency. And I push the transparency to the max, and that's about it. I didn't want to bother by uh, using um, an actual uh, sprite, and the reason for this is that kind of need a bit of transparency, right? And I hope 255 levels of transparency are enough. Okay, so uh, we're, going, we're at 4.2, okay. And that means, uh, no, 3.1, 3.2. Okay, we're at what? Let's see, we've rendered nine tiles out of 16, if I'm not uh, mistaken, but I can check by editing this and looking at this, 16, okay? So we've done nine. Well, we only have five to go and we're gonna get our, there you go, uh, our render. And yeah, we're at three. So this is, will be our, I think it's the 10th tile that we're rendering right now. To be honest, we can see it in here. I've put a bit of, a, of an echo to see that this is uh, rendering frame, blah, 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 blah. Right now, this, the question is, okay, that's nice and dandy, but it's on Windows. You did it for Windows. How do, do it, how do I do it on Mac? Well, to do this for Mac, it's uh, as simple as changing the path. Instead of having C program that the redshift will be for a Mac, for instance, right? It will be uh, like this application. Redshift, okay, and to get the actual uh, folder, it's like exactly like this. It's bin redshift command line, okay, and that's all there is as a difference, nothing else, okay. This should work, 
should be fine. Uh, the command line only does printing. It doesn't, you can probably, uh, if you want to run this through a Python shell on a Mac, you can, uh, you can do this and then, you know, have it if you want interactive, right? In this case, I'm using a specific, I'm hard coding this in here. Well, if you're running uh, Python through the uh, command line, then you can uh, type in your own arguments. But this is not set for arguments or anything. It's set to be run through the UI because it's easier and it's um, less cumbersome as a user. You don't know much about all of these. So the simpler we make it, the easier it is for you. Um, and this is in no way sanctioned by anyone. It's my own tool. Okay, so we've got 16, we're done. Okay, let's look at the end result. Remember, we've just rendered a 10K file with very little sweat, to be honest. Okay, and very little memory. There you go. This is your 10 render, 10K render tile. Now, uh, to be honest, I don't know why it's like this, probably because of the camera. Remember, when I forgot to put the proper camera, I ended up with some camera, so let's do it right. Let's create a camera. So uh, in this case, two options, depending on this little options we've added in 3510, native camera for new scenes. So you can see here, I can create a standard camera and there is no tag because this is the new camera. Okay, and that's fine. I can use this and export this again. Uh, export Reshift Proxy, Galaxy.rs. And to be honest, if I look at this, actually, I don't want to render from here. Let's do a, a proper render from RV because I can zoom in with RV, right? Okay, um, this is kind of what I'm expecting to get, right? And um, if I disable sampling or put this at point one, that's the, probably the reason I have something that's not very clear to me. See, not the best thing in the world. And you can see here, it takes a while at 2K, right? So, um, Let's kill this. I don't want to, to render through the UI. It might happen that I can't render 10K from, from this. Okay, so um, we've exported this, that's fine. Let's do the, the same thing again. Actually, I do have it already, so I can delete this. Okay, and let's say I want to render a 20K this time. We're 10K by 10K, that's fine. Um, bear with me, cause this is fun. Okay, and let's do the 20K, why not? Extensions, console, and I also need the script manager. Okay, and 20K, 2048 by 2048. And let's do um, 10 by 10. That will be 100 tiles. Okay, but believe me, it will work. Okay, processing 100 tiles. And we're going in here. Edit, delete this, paste that. Bam, bam, thank you, ma'am. Save. Come back in here, render me bad, Ta -da! and I'm gonna have a hundred folders. Okay, believe me, at a hundred uh, images at 20K each, Photoshop might choke a bit. Okay, that's why I'm using Nuke for instance, right? It can take it. But this is how you actually render huge, huge images without not much sweat, to be honest. Of course, your computer will try to render all this and might be slow, but you know what? It's renderable. 
which is a big difference between rendering and not rendering at all. Hope it helps. Happy Refusing. Cheers.